everybody, it's Patrick Freewald at Frog's Point, and today we are going to be cooking a roulade. This is a rolled piece, in this case, of pork loin that is stuffed with a layer of all kinds of the delicious stuff. We're going to have bacon, we're going to have caramelized onions, we're going to have spinach, and it is going to be awesome. Check it out. Every great recipe starts with bacon, so stack four strips, slice them lengthwise, and then dice them up. Get a pan, get some oil, get it heating up until it's pretty warm, and then we're going to toss in our bacon. Oh yeah, listen to that. Get a little stir, turn the heat down. You don't want it too high. You want to cook this low and slow to render out as much of that fat as possible. Meanwhile, roughly chop eight ounces of mushrooms, whatever kind you like. Now that the bacon is nice and rendered, we're going to set it aside and we're going to put it in a bowl with a paper towel and let it drain. But we're going to keep most of this fat. So you can see that the pan still has a tablespoon or two of fat in it and all of this nice crunchy stuff on the bottom there. That's okay. That's going to be delicious. We're going to add the mushrooms. Turn the heat up a little bit to about medium of five. We're going to give them a good stir in that bacon fat. We don't need to salt them because of all the salt in the bacon. A couple of these pieces are pretty chunky. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Let it sit for a few minutes. Give it another stir. As the water comes out of the mushrooms, you'll see that all this delicious stuff that stuck to the pan when the bacon cooked is all coming up and that's wonderful that is all flavor and it's going to make everything taste even better so make sure as you're cooking your mushrooms down that you take the time to scrape all that up as you go if you miss a little bit it's not a big deal there's going to be even more water coming out of the spinach after six or ten minutes depending the mushrooms are going to be reduced down like crazy there's no more water coming out of them and now they're just starting to stick they're frying now rather than having the water cooked out of them. So at this point, what you want to do is add a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, give it a really, really quick stir, and then put in an entire bag of spinach. That's eight ounces of spinach. And a nice pinch of salt. Yes, there is salt in the bacon, but this is an enormous amount of spinach, and it's going to need the help to cook down. Greg says salt is about more than just flavor. You use salt in order to pull water out of things through the process of osmosis. If there's more salt on the outside than there is on the inside, then water will come out. If there's more salt on the inside than on the outside, then water will go back in which is how you can make, say, a soup less salty by throwing in a bunch of potatoes, cooking it up, and then pulling the potatoes out. Once pretty much all of the water is out of the spinach and mushroom mixture, go ahead and give it a couple of good whacks of cracked brown pepper. This is a great pepper mill because I never have to ask my wife what year we got married. This was a gift from her mother-in-law. My mother-in-law. All right, so give it a stir. Kill the heat and let it sit. We have here an absolutely beautiful piece of pork loin. And what we are going to do with this is we are going to cut it into a long, thin strip. We're going to start on the bottom on the other side of the fat cap. And we're going to start here and we're going to give it a cut and we're going to cut not quite all the way down and through. And it's going to peel away a bit. You're going to let it do that. And then when you get towards the bottom there, 
like that. You're just going to turn your knife, you're going to round the corner, lay it flat, and keep going on the other side. Now the goal here, it, roulades are rustic. It doesn't really matter exactly how thick you make it. The thinner it is, the fancier it is, but it doesn't really matter. Do whatever you like, and the first couple times you'll probably screw it up and it's not a big deal. I've got this big knob of fat on the end there, and that's fine. I'm just going to ignore it, and we'll go around it, and it'll end up being a lump on the inside, and it won't hurt a thing. So, you cut around, and I think I can probably get one more little bit out of this. I think if we come in there, and come down there, and lay it down flat, and then, oh yeah and then cut in this way. And we have now made a giant ribbon of pork loin, and that is exactly what you want. Okay, it's time to stuff this beast, and to be honest, it just wouldn't be the same without my secret ingredient. In this little container here, I've got some balsamic and honey caramelized onions. They don't look very good, do they? But they are absolutely fantastic. And I don't know that there's a good way to do this besides just smear it out and get it set in there. And this used to be six pounds of onions. There's probably about four pounds left. They cook down like crazy. And maybe I'll do a video on how to do that. I, uh, I drove my buddy Matt insane by posting pictures as I did it on Facebook. And it really, really made him nuts. It was pretty funny. Um, he was just so tired of every time he logged in, there was another picture of onions. Because this takes a good long time to do six pounds of onions. But you're going to just spread them out over. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is not rocket science. And you're just going to spread them around. And good. Those are our onions. I'm going to wash my hands. We'll do the next step. Rosemary goes great with pork, and the dried stuff is okay, but the fresh stuff is just awesome. And I highly recommend, if you don't have an herb garden, get one. They're just wonderful. And you can grow them inside, you can grow them on a balcony, you can grow them on a deck, you can grow them anywhere. And fresh herbs are that you've grown yourself are just so, so, so wonderful. This doesn't have to be cut up all that hard because it's fresh, so it's not real hard and woody like the dried stuff is. And... That's all you need there. The one other thing that I'm gonna add to this, which I think a lot of people probably wouldn't, is I have left over from this fall, it was frozen, a ghost pepper. And I love spicy food, and I think that this is gonna go real nice in here. And so I'm gonna take this ghost pepper, and I'm not wearing gloves, so I'm gonna be really careful. And I'm gonna cut it up. Now this was frozen, so it's softer than a fresh pepper. But I'm gonna be careful not to even touch it with this hand and just give it a good one-handed dice. I don't want too big a piece in my mouth at any given time while I'm eating my roulade, so I'm gonna chop this up pretty fine. And that looks good enough, all right. Hey, remember that bacon from earlier? Because I do. On it goes. Again, you don't have to be perfect. You want to make sure that you're getting out to the edges, though, because there's nothing sadder than taking a bite of a delicious bacon and caramelized onion roulade and not getting a bite of bacon. So you just spread all that on there, and when you're done, it's time for the rosemary. Same deal, spread it around. Try not to go too crazy with it in terms of spilling it all over the place. And the hot stuff. This is going to be a little exciting, so I'm going to put a little bit here. Oh, that's a lot. A little bit there. Get it all nice and spread out so that every bite has a little delicious hit of that ghost pepper. Our mushroom and spinach mixture is now cool enough to work with, so to that we're going to add about four ounces of mozzarella cheese and one egg. 
there is no graceful way to do this next part so I suggest just going one-handed and getting in there and giving it a good mix around just mix it up it doesn't have to be perfect but you want it to be pretty uniform because that egg is gonna bind everything together there you have it it's just as well that you haven't washed your hands because all of this now needs to go on here and boy does that not look all that good right now but it's gonna just get it spread out it's gonna squish out to the edges so I'm not as worried about this going all the way to the edge and you'll notice that on this far end I've left about an inch or so of meat uh, maybe two inches uh, without anything there and that's good because the very very end of this thing is gonna want to spill out and spill over so now that this is all done it's time to roll but now before you roll I suggest you snug a little piece of butcher's twine under one end which can sometimes be a little hard to do but there we go we're gonna want that's gonna make our lives a lot easier when we're ready to tie so you ready there's nothing to this you just take it and you roll it up don't squish it too hard it's gonna squish enough as it is and you just roll until it's rolled and if you to tie first thing you do is you take your butcher's twine and you tie yourself a knot just give it a couple of twists and pull this doesn't have to be Boy Scout territory there okay so that's the first step I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around uh, because I find it a little easier to work this way and the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna take our next little piece and we're gonna make a loop we're gonna shimmy this underneath might need a little help we're gonna shimmy that underneath we're gonna bring it up and we're gonna tuck the whole thing by the way if you don't have one of these little holders for butchers twine you should get one they're great tuck that whole thing underneath like so and then that goes there this tightens up here and you have yourself your next little piece just pull that tight and you're gonna repeat that whole process you can hold and you can go ahead and get rid of your excess string on both ends and there you have it now is the time to give it a little bit of salt on the outside yes I'm sprinkling salt on my board little black pepper all right and then just roll it around in that mess you just made and get every little side so that it's all seasoned up if you lose a little bit it's not a big deal just tuck it back in and now it's ready for the bag okay we are in the bag we're all sealed up we're ready to go the sous vide is set at 145 degrees we're gonna put it in the drink and we're gonna let it go for 90 minutes so this is just gonna snug right in there make sure it's totally covered lock it down and time to wait okay why 145 degrees some recipes say you can cook pork medium rare at 139, which on a traditional oven you never can, but in a sous vide is safe if you cook it long enough. The temperature you need to pasteurize things at depends on how long you do it, and you can pasteurize things at 130 degrees. It's why a lot of sous vide recipes will cook beef at 129 or 130 for many hours. But we're using egg as a thickener inside our roulade and egg whites will not cook and stiffen up unless they're at at least 144 degrees. So that's why 145 is our target temperature on our sous vide and we need to leave it in long enough that it cooks all the way through. 
At that temperature, the yolk isn't going to actually stiffen up, but that's okay. You want a little moisture in your filling, and egg yolk is delicious, and it's gonna be pasteurized, and it'll be wonderful. To make the sauce, crank the heat to high, throw in some rosemary, a quarter of a cup of balsamic vinegar, and one heaping teaspoon of honey. Now this is goldenrod honey. It's one of the darker honeys. It's earthier. It's got a really nice rich flavor that I just love. A lot of people prefer the lighter honeys like clover, but goldenrod is wonderful and it goes great with something fall-like like pork and rosemary. So the honey has completely dissolved and what we're left with is a really, really dark mixture here that is some rosemary in balsamic vinegar. And boy, does it smell good. We're gonna bring this to a boil and let it go for a little while until it's reduced about half and we'll coat the back of a spoon. Once it's boiling nice and hard like this, you can go ahead and turn the heat down to about medium and give it a stir here and there and just let it thicken. It'll t only take a few minutes in a pan this big and we didn't start with a whole lot of liquid. When a sauce coats the back of a spoon, what we mean is you take your spoon and then the sauce is sticking to it. And as it's sticking, if you can just run your hand along it and leave a line like that, you know it's done. That's it. Take it off the heat and you're ready to go. Now sous vide meat never ever looks good right out of the bag. You have to go on the texture and the smell. And this smells fantastic. It's got a nice cooked sous vide texture. And now we're going to sear it off in a pan and really give it that look and that crust that we really want. Ready? Here we go. The ends never look that good, so we'll get that out of the way. And look at that. That is a perfect, beautiful, juicy, tender pork roulade. Let's serve it up. I hope you didn't forget about our sauce. Check this out. That is a picture-perfect, beautiful, delicious pork roulade. Okay, so we can all see that it's pretty. Let's see how it tastes. I'm gonna get a little bit of the meat, a little bit of the filling together on the fork. Here we go. Mmm. Mm. It's so good. The, the meat is perfectly cooked, super tender, very juicy. The filling has that nice, beautiful caramelized onion taste. The, the mushrooms come through, the spinach is really good. The, the extra little bit of balsamic and honey on top provides a delicious tart tang to go along with it. It is beautiful. It is a little involved, but overall really rather easy to prepare and it tastes wonderful. Cheers everybody, I'm going in for another bite.